Sound.com. Hello and welcome to Jolly Old England. No, actually, it's welcome to Jolly Old Riverside Community Players. Why am I British today? I actually play a lot of British, but now I'm Philip Gabriel and uh, welcome to Cast Conversations Inside the Arena. And as you may have guessed, it's that time of year. We are doing our annual production of A Christmas Carol. Uh, and joining me today is director Mark Robertson. Welcome. Hi. I'm, I'm pleased to have you here. Very excited to be here. Now, you may know Mark from other Riverside Community Player Productions. You were Joe, Joe. in uh, All My Sons, yes. for which you received the Scotty Award. Congratulations. Yes, that was a, a great show. Thank you. Now you're changing hats and yes. you are directing A Christmas Carol. Yes. So. Absolutely. How's, uh, how's stepping into jolly old England? Is it... Uh, is it, I, I, everybody's familiar, of course, with Christmas right. Carol, but and of course, you and I we were in a production together. Did yeah. Christmas Carol together during yeah. that time we don't talk about right. the pandemic, the dark um, days. Yeah, so you've played Scrooge, right, uh, with with us, and now you're you're directing, right. So tell us about uh, tell us about the vision of the vision of Mark for Christmas Carol. Well, I'm going to tell you the beginning of the whole thing. Actually, was um, while we were filming three years ago. Yes. Um, in my downtime, which Scrooge doesn't have a whole lot of, but yeah. I did have a moment <laughs> where minutes. I was just kind of looking around saying, yeah. someday in the future, if I were directing this, how would I, what would I do? And the first thing I saw was the ghost of Christmas future just peeling itself off the wall from the curtains and mm -hmm. wandering onto the stage. And that was kind of where I started. So Mark, you have a background in puppetry. I do. And I, do. I mean, not just any puppetry, I mean, we're talking serious puppetry, like, like traditional, um, like Punch and Judy. Right. Um, tell us about that. Well, it's, uh, it was a childhood uh, hobby. Mm. And as I got older as an actor, I delved into it uh, as something in addition to theater. And uh, my wife and I started a company called Icarus Puppet Company 30-some uh, years ago. And uh, we were uh, performing throughout the West, mostly in Southern California for many years. We met a Punch and Judy uh, professor from London who uh, came to San Diego where we lived and uh, was very inspired. I had a Punch puppet and I showed him to them and we told them what we did with it. And his wife said, oh, that that's, doesn't do him any justice. <laughs> <laughs> and that it kind of what led us to do the whole Punch and Judy show. Oh, and uh, I've been doing that uh, for 30 years now, and uh, most lately performing at the Dickens Festival here in Riverside. Yeah, I have, I have seen you do that. And I, I think there was a time during, a, a, we were doing outdoor shows here during pandemic. Right. I feel like I saw one of your shows there and I was excited to see it because it was in English. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think I may, mostly I think Punch and Judy I've seen is like French or German or what? something. Good. It's Polchinelle or uh, yeah, yeah. Polchinella. Or maybe, maybe it was Italian. They're all, all, all the same guy, but right, uh, right. yeah, slightly different character. Uh, so that, that, was, that was a lot of fun. So you're a, a San Diegan? Is that uh, you're uh, recently come to Riverside? Or? Recently, seven years in Riverside. Okay. Uh, we, we lived in San Diego. F we left college to go to San Diego and were there for about 35 years. And uh, that's where we started our careers outside of college as actors and and uh, producers of children's theater. Oh, okay. And eventually the the, pu the uh, puppet company. So one of my access, one of my hometowns. What what organizations were you involved with in San Diego? Back? Well, we were in the um, as well as an actor. I act, I acted all around town um, in the um, early '80s, mid '80s, um, and uh, I was in many theaters that are now closed and dark. Yeah because yeah. that happens in the cycle. It does. Well, I remember I mean, just from attending theater, mm -hmm. you know, as a, as a young person there, there were a lot, there was a thriving, not only like small, like community theaters, but there were dinner theaters that seemed mm -hmm. like all, all over San Diego. There were was a, yeah. kind of a rich landscape for actors. Like I did that. do one dinner theater production there uh, and the theater closed shortly after. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> um, did some professional work. It's mostly semi-professional. Yeah. And uh, it is true that San Diego, like the Inland Empire, has, is replete with small yeah. theaters. And there's always new ones growing up, and then they move 
a little higher in the in the in the echelon of theater, and some of them keep going, and some of them go away. Those actors regroup and come back to another theater. It's a very fluid and very exciting environment in theater in any community I've been in. So through throughout this whole your whole time in acting and, and performing in San Diego, puppetry has kind of been a something that you've always done in addition or is it kind of a thread through it started um, off as an additional thing uh -huh. and it became then our sole focus for 18 years um, oh I see we, uh, okay. we survived uh, we were a, a, a nonprofit organization and we survived things like 9-11 uh, where everybody's funding priorities flipped mm -hmm. from the arts to only social things mm. Um, we survived the governor who took the uh, <laughs> the uh, California Arts Council from a thriving organization all across the state to one employee and very little money. Oh golly. And that actually was in some ways the end of Icarus Puppet Company because most of our programs were based in the school system. Wow. Either educationally sure, because that supported. then you would do the first student shows. Right and, and, and uh, uh, we did lots and lots of workshops for K through three mostly. In all so the years we were there, I I'm getting the impression that maybe we're going to see some puppets in the um, uh, Christmas Carol. Yeah, we're see some I puppetry think so. There. Absolutely, I'm excited to see it. Yeah, that was one of the things that I, uh, when I uh, uh, applied to be the director for the show, that was my key thing. Is, is yeah. I thought this is something that I have in my background that mm -hmm. I can add to this show, not knowing because I hadn't seen it that last year's show also included puppetry. Uh, but we're doing a different style. Of course. Well, I mean, everybody brings different things. I think that's one of the great, cool things mm -hmm. about we, Riverside Community Players at Christmas Card. We do it every single year. It's more or less the same script. Sometimes people go one way or another mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a different director almost right. every year. Uh, sometimes there's different casts. Sometimes, yeah. you know, cast members go in and out. And I think that's what makes it dynamic. But mm -hmm. I... Uh, what I hear from the community is that uh, we've become such a part of uh, people's Christmas traditions right. that they, they look forward to seeing what we're going to do with it this year. So I'm excited to I'm see what, what some I'm of the puppetry... I'm really excited what's going to yeah. happen. Can you, can you give us a little, maybe a hint? No. Of, no? Okay. No. Like theater <laughs> theater magic we can't, yeah, we can't definitely. talk about. Yeah. Um, Are we going to see something peeling off a wall maybe? Uh, we're going <laughs> like, to do our best to recreate my original I'm, vision. I'm, I'm trying to get it out of him. It so see. inspired <laughs> me at the time that I thought I have to try really hard to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I have some really fantastic performers. Uh, one of the performers that I worked with in the past, Mario Adurius, is oh, yeah. uh, in All My Sons, right. is, uh, also has an interest in puppetry just as a kind oh. of a little side right. interest in his head. And I've, he's worked one of my puppets before in another in a video production that was done here um, during that same period. And I thought of him when I, he came to audition. I thought he could be my ghost of Christmas future. Oh, okay. He's a tall and imposing character already. Yeah. And adding, uh, I will give you this, another two feet and a half on top of that. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Christmas future, I hope, will scare everybody a little bit. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I, I, I don't. So. I, there's always the uh, obviously a dark element of of uh, Dickens' A Christmas Absolutely. Carol. It really Absolutely. is, and and I think that's that's part of the fun. Well, it, it's a ghost story. It is a ghost story. Uh, ultimately, yeah. it's a ghost story. I, I've also discovered something else that it's about time travel, which I'd never really thought about, even though it's past, present, and future. I never really clicked until recently. Right. right. Yeah. But it's mainly it's a ghost story about redemption. Yeah. So if you had one thing to say that it was your, your biggest challenge in, for this particular uh, production in space or whatever, um, and I always, for me, the arena is, it, it's challenging. It is. It's fun, it's challenging, it it's exhilarating as a performer, but as a director, it's it definitely poses challenge. Was there, was there a particular thing that uh, maybe stuck out with you? Honestly, honestly, I haven't been challenged so much because I have experience acting in the, in the arena. I yeah. kind of knew what to expect. Yeah, yeah. And... But having uh, several young people in the cast who have never been anywhere but on a proscenium stage, that has been a challenge, is trying to convince them, yes, you can stand in one place and be seen by most of the audience when you're right. you know, surrounded by an audience. Yeah. But I have the benefit also of having uh, several um, more experienced actors who've been on this stage many times. And uh, I have asked my younger actors to watch these actors because they're 
they know how to handle the arena setup. So they know how to make sure you're seen by the people who are directly behind you as well as the people directly in front of you. Right. And right. It's, uh, that's been the biggest challenge, definitely. Well, we're going to take a little break, okay. uh, but when we come back, we're going to meet a couple of your actors. Uh, I, I believe uh, Ebenezer Scrooge will yes. be joining us, and yes. I'm not sure who the other, the, is it the narrator? She's the narrator. The narrator. The so she's the... Yeah, she's the glue that holds it together. Right. She's yeah. the Charles Dickens of our but production. She's the Charles Dickens of okay. your production. Okay, well, we'll be right back. So, uh, but, but stay with us because you're going to get some information on your screen about how to get our tickets and all of that stuff that you need to know. Um, and actually, a, an interesting thing about this year is we're going for two weekends. So you have two weekends to catch this show. Um, but that information is coming right up and we'll be right back. And we're back, and I hope you got a lot of good information there about how to get tickets for uh, Christmas Carol. Uh, and I'm Mark. I'm joined with here with Mark Robertson, director of uh, this year's production of A Christmas Carol. But I am also joined uh, by two cast members. We have Rosemary Terrell and Paul Kellerman playing Ebenezer Scrooge. Yeah, that's very. I like the Scrooge. That's uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, the narrator. Welcome, right. welcome. Thank you for having us. Well, we're, I'm. Thank you for. Uh, coming here to Riverside Community Players. Now, um, Paul, is this your first production here at... Uh... Actually, no, I played Scrooge last year. So you I was did in a, I was, So this is, I'm right. reprising the role. Okay. Which is, uh, it's my second production here at Riverside. Um, I did uh, another, I did a summer kind of thing in the area too. I moved back, I'm a native California, moved back about two years ago, but I'd done a lot of theater in the Midwest. Okay, so, so well, welcome back. We're glad to yeah, we're nice. glad to have you. How is how is it coming back and doing? You, you're, you're getting to do Scrooge again, but of course, different directors, different, exactly. totally different thing. How is how is that? It, it's it's different. Different directors, different things. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, the vision's different, um, and the vision of the characters are different. And I'm actually it's it's fun because I'm pulling some of the old stuff, but I'm getting a lot of new stuff. So it ends up becoming more interesting. And and I think. Uh, Mark's vision, I you know, I really like. I think there's, it's kind of typical in a lot of productions where where he's just black and white in the sense of mean and then happy and yeah, everything's good. Yeah, and yeah. this is more, you know, Dickens wrote in so many, so much uh, dialogue that was really gradations of his change as as he slowly goes through this and, and comes to realizations until. Um, and I always, I, I always think it's interesting as an actor uh, when you do get to revisit a role, and uh, you, you know it's um, it's rare. I, I hardly ever get to do it, but uh, the times that I've done it, it's like it, it's great because you think, oh, you know, I really screwed that up <laughs> the first time, <laughs> and true. and you know, I, I get a I get a chance at redemption here for you know how <laughs> to deliver a line. I don't know if you're ever like this, but if you do, you wake up uh, you know two in the morning, uh, you know five weeks after a production is closed, and think, oh, I could have done the line that way. Oh yeah, I should have done it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Have you had those moments? With I had, yeah. Reason? And also, it's also hard. It takes me weeks before the lines disappear from my brain for you know after yeah. you do it. But um, yeah, definitely. I think it's. I've reprised a, a few other, a couple other roles, and it's, it's. I like it because the lines are not. You know, you worry so much about the lines when you first do it and you first learn a role. Well, I don't worry as much about the lines because I know a lot of them, but there's been some new ones. Yeah. And then I get a different take on it. Ooh, that's a different way to look at it. I'll deliver it differently. You know, and that I did before. Now locally, let's see, you did some uh, work at Redlands Theater Fest I this summer. Yes. Uh, Arsenic and Old Lace. I was in Arsenic yes, and Old Lace. Yes, I, I saw that. Oh, did you? Yes, did I did. You? I enjoyed it very much. Yeah. Uh, was, and you were in another production of it there. They they did they did Chekhov's uh, uh, The Seagull. The Seagull. And I had, I had a right. small role in that, but um, Arsenic was just, a, just a, I was running up and down stairs. Yeah, I saw that. That was a lot of fun. Teddy. Yes, Teddy. <laughs> Charge! Charge! <laughs> <laughs> well, it gets your, gets your steps in, right? So no, as, as a, definitely. Uh, <laughs> I, I did. I did 
staircase is six times <laughs> each show. Yeah, and those are some big staircases. It's a huge, it's a it's huge thing. It's also really set. fast to go up the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. You're climbing. Yeah. But no, I enjoyed it. It was uh, it was interesting. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice venue over there. I really like it. Yeah, it's fun. Under the stars. Mm -hmm. Spring mosquito repellent, right? <laughs> that, no joke. That's Seriously. the truth. Um, Rosemary. Welcome. Uh, now, is this your first production here on stage as a... Yes, yeah. it is my first time right. with the Riverside Community Players. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. And you're playing the narrator. That's correct. Which is probably one of the, probably the most important role, because if you skip a line, we've got scenes that are completely left out, right? <laughs> no stress, right? <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Um, tell me about that. Is it, uh, has it been fun to kind of be the, the, the glue that's holding this thing together, really? I really love Christmas Carol. Yeah. It's been part of my Christmas tradition to read it cover to cover every year for many, many years. I love the language. I love the richness of the characters. And yes, it, it is uh, different doing a play, a performance version of it. But I think one of the biggest challenges is making sure that you do justice to the written word because Dickens yeah. was so brilliant. It's very true. I mean, obviously a master wordsmith, uh, you know, as, as, as Charles Dickens can be. And there's a lot of the original language in this, in this yes. script that's kind of lifted directly from it. Um, when you are uh, doing something like that and, and coming between all of the all of the realms, do you do you get a sense of of the overall picture of it, or are you looking from scene to scene uh, as as you're running? I do I do feel like I get a, an overall picture of what's going on, and even at times when I'm not in the scene. I'm still sort of in the background. Yeah. So I do feel a part of every scene. And yes, it's, uh, it, but I also do have those moments where it's like, okay, which ghost is this? Past, present? <laughs> yeah. Which, one, yeah, yeah. which one am I right. supposed to be talking about right now? So yeah, there is that. That's just nature of rehearsal too, of not always re rehearsing everything in the right order and then just learning it. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, I don't know if this, you may not know this, but um, it's, a, it's a husband and wife team. Mark and Rosemary have been married, uh, we were just talking about this, 30, 30 some 30, odd years. 30, 38 30, years. 38 years. So you're like, uh, you're like the uh, uh, Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward of <laughs> Riverside Community Players, like I John wish. Krasinski, Emily Blunt, you know? <laughs> The, the family that acts together, works together, and, and directs together, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's neat. So I have to ask you now, and Rosemary, this is just between you and I, because we, we're not going to share this with anybody I'll, else. I'll but yeah, you guys, <laughs> uh, how, how is it working with Mark as a director? Well, uh, for 18 years, Mark and I worked <laughs> together on uh, our Icarus Puppet Company, right. which he talked about earlier. Uh, we, we, what he didn't say was we did full-scale plays with oh. puppets. Okay. So uh, we worked together virtually every day for almost 18 years. And people would ask me all the time, how can you stand being around your <laughs> husband all the time? My answer was always the same, we like each other. We like each other, yeah. Oh, that's a lot of fun. So is this the, uh, this? well obviously it's first your first time at Riverside Community Players, but your uh, first time working together in like live theater? You know, not, not puppets or no? No, you've done you've done things before. We we ran okay. before the puppet company. We ran a children's theater oh, where okay. we did plays, yeah, and have done other shows together when we were in uh, college. Yeah. And it's but it's the big thing for me is it's been a really long time yeah. <laughs> since I've done any performing. So I'm do not going to I'm not going to say how many years. Okay, we're um, not talking about that. <laughs> I, I did. Yes, Rosemary does direct. As a matter of fact, yes. through most of our earlier work together. The roles were reversed, and I was the actor, and she was the director. Oh, I see. Lynn, do we have one of those director applications for our next? <laughs> <laughs> season? Yeah, yeah, we need to. We need to get. Well, that's great. I'm I, I'm thrilled to have you uh, to have you both here with you know with us doing this, and I I really can't wait to see uh, what we're going to we're going to experience with uh, you know the puppets and the and just the the, the different visions, and I, I'm I'm excited, but. So I have a question, and it's not uh, related to uh, Christmas Carol, but we were talking about Christmas traditions. Uh, we all have our Christmas traditions. Uh, maybe it's a, a favorite thing to do at Christmas, but we all have Christmas movies. So I ask you all, what is the one movie that you have to see every single Christmas? 
season. No, I'll start with Mark. Oh, you should have gone with me last. I'm oh, okay. No, I'll, I'll, I'll do <laughs> Put me on the here. spot. <laughs> um, honestly, in a different in a different life, I would have said Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol because that was, <laughs> oh, that yeah, was my yeah. very first version yeah, yeah. of Christmas <laughs> Carol. But my, uh, uh, I do love um, the a lot of the, the later versions of the film of Christmas Carol, the musical, the Patrick Stewart version. But I oh, also, sure. I also great... love other things, and one of my favorite all time Christmas stories is the Charlie Brown Christmas. So that's an every year? I think so. When that's I an every year. Story. I love the music as well as just the, yeah. the message of the, of the whole yeah. the little story. Yes. And for you, Ebenezer, what is your, what does is, what is Scrooge watch every Christmas? Well, I could be very <laughs> serious about this, yes. but really what I love is I've, I'm actually a musical theater person generally, I and sing. I sing in, I've sung in a lot of um, chorales and things, and I still love White Christmas. Oh. I just love that movie. Interesting. It just feels, it's just about the heart. Yeah. You know, that's, it just, I love it. Sisters. Sisters. So you get theater people together, and we're going to, we're going to, we can't, we can't do too much. We're going to get I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a so that doesn't quite work. Life is a song. You know, interesting trivia. Did you know that White Christmas was actually written in Banning, California, just down the, down the road? Right, Irving Berlin was in Banning, California? He was, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, he was. Uh, what was he doing in Banning? <laughs> on his way to Palm Springs or something. And oh, there, probably. There was, uh, at that time, there was a huge uh, ho hotel uh, that lots of oh, uh, film and the uh, Morongo of its day. Huh? It was, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah, just no no gambling, but yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah, there, interesting. Was, there was gambling. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe, just not least in the day. basement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rosemary, what is your uh, what is your go to Christmas? I love so many Christmas movies, but my absolute go to is Christmas in Connecticut. And I know it's okay. a movie that a lot of people don't even know. Yeah, that's, um, Monty Woolley is in it. It is. Yeah, yeah. And, and Sheridan. It is, and, yeah. uh, uh, Barbara Stanwyck. Okay. That's uh, right. It yeah. is a really wonderful story, and I love it. It's about a Martha, Martha Stewart character who's faking it. She doesn't know how to cook. She doesn't know how to, she doesn't have a farm. She's not married. She doesn't have a baby. And her, uh, her editor, invites himself to Christmas in Connecticut. That's who, who plays, the whole story. Who, who, who plays her? Barbara Stanwyck. Oh, Barbara Stanwyck. Stanwyck. Oh, yeah. she's amazing. Sydney Green Street. Yes. Yeah, oh, Green Street. Yeah. Did I miss that? Great, great character yeah. actors yeah. in that. Yeah. Well, you've heard everybody's uh, traditional Christmas uh, what they like to do for Christmas and movie wise or play wise, but we definitely want to thank you out there who make Riverside Community Players annual production of A Christmas Carol part of your Christmas tradition. And we've done it now, I, and I should have looked this up because uh, Kathy Gage is going to be watching and say, and, and <laughs> you'll correct me, I know, but I want to say 15 to oh, somewhere between 15 and 20 years we've been doing it every every single year. Um, and you and you you make us part of your holiday tradition, and, and you come to see us, and we we sincerely appreciate that. So, anyway, well, thank you guys very much. I know this is your first run through tonight, so I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna let you go and, and get all. And I know Mark wants to crack the whip uh, and yeah. get 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 going. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. We're looking thank forward you. to seeing it. I appreciate. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to, to speak with us this evening. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So, Christmas Carol uh, is opening. What date? Uh, well, the, just, the 8th. The 8th. December 8th. December 8th. And we're running for, for two weekends. Get your tickets. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Anyway. Cool. Thank you very much uh, for joining us on Inside the Arena. Uh, I'm Philip Gabriel. And I also have to say a shout out to Lynn Innes, who's always the thankless person behind the camera who puts all of this together and uh, makes this happen. Thank you very much. And we'll see you uh, at uh, opening night of Christmas Carol. Merry Christmas. Ben Sam Dotcom